Hey everyone, welcome to topic 1.1 of AP Environmental Science. This is Introduction to Ecosystems. In daily video one, we're going to cover predator-prey relationships, as well as some basic background information on ecosystems. And we're gonna focus on how the availability of resources influences species interactions. Before we get further into the video, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Lisa Bagley. I've been teaching apes since uh, 2010 here in the Dallas area. I currently work for Mesquite ISD at West Mesquite High School, and I am excited to be part of your educational journey for apes. So here, here we go. What are we gonna learn today? Let's find out. We're gonna focus on learning objective ERT1A. So what is that? Well, in this video, we're gonna explore how to connect the essential knowledge, which is what you need to know in this course, the nuts and bolts, to the science skills, which is how you have to show what you know on the actual AP exam. We're going to review some basic characteristics of ecosystems, focusing on biotic and abiotic interactions. You may be familiar with those words from previous courses. We're going to begin to explain how the availability of resources influences species interactions, which is our learning objective. That's the ERT 1.A. And we're going to discuss some aspects of predator-prey relationships. So what exactly is an ecosystem? Well, it's a community of living organisms, that's the biotic part, in conjunction with the non-living components of their environment, that's the abiotic part, and they interact as a system. Ecosystems are the result of both biotic and abiotic interactions, and that's our enduring understanding. So you're going to see that enduring understanding of biotic and abiotic interactions, as well as our LO, our learning objective about um, uh, how species, how resource availability influences species interactions woven throughout these videos. So here's a question for you. Based on the definition above, the definition of ecosystems, Take a look at these scenarios that are in the thought bubble here and consider which of them might be an ecosystem interaction. You can pause your video and take a look at those. Be sure to justify your why based on that definition of an ecosystem. I'll see you in a second. So let's talk about some biotic and abiotic components of ecosystems. The biotic parts of ecosystems are the living parts. They include things like producers, plants, photosynthetic algae, phytoplankton, herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, detritivores, and soil. Soil's in that living category. But we also have abiotic factors in ecosystems. Those are the non-living parts, such as sunlight, temperature, precipitation, moisture or water levels, the pH of the soil or the water, and soil. There it is again in the abiotic factor list. So consider this, why is soil in both the biotic and the abiotic lists? Hmm. Let's take a look at the big picture for species interactions here. Interactions in ecosystems between species can include three major categories that the College Board would like you to know. Uh, the first is predator-prey relationships. And if you take a look at some of the images that are over there on the side of the, this slide, you'll see a grizzly bear with a salmon in its mouth. That is a predator-prey relationship. Interactions can also include symbiotic interactions, such as mutualism, commensalism, or parasitism. And we'll get to those in a subsequent video. If you take a look at your images there, we've got a clownfish hanging out in a sea anemone. That is an example of mutualism. We also can have competitive relationships and competition can happen between different species or within a single species. So your final image here is uh, many different species on an African savanna and they are surrounding a resource there and they may or may not be competing over that abiotic resource. So again, as we consider each of these interactions, we're gonna try to identify the biotic or the abiotic resources that are driving the interaction in each scenario. And we're gonna explain how the availability of those resources influences the species interaction, because that's our learning objective. 
Okay, time for the nitty gritty. This is Essential Knowledge ERT 1.8.1. It is the first essential knowledge uh, piece that is uh, in AP Environmental Science, and this is predator-prey relationships. In the simplest terms, predators hunt and kill their prey. That's what they do. This is a biotic interaction. These are two living species that are interacting in this exchange. For predators, the prey is a food resource. So as we loop back in to our lesson objective and our enduring understanding, how, do re how does resources drive the interaction? The prey is a resource. It's a food resource for the predators. So the final part of this is as the availability of the prey fluctuates, the numbers of the predators do as well. And that again goes back to how does the availability of resources influence the, in the interaction? Something to consider as we move forward, based on your prior knowledge of ecosystems, how do we normally classify a prey species when we're talking in terms of trophic structure? What about a predator species? You're going to learn more about these later in unit one, but I want you to kind of think about that as we move through. So let's do some practice. Um, we're looking at here a graphical stimulus um, that was pulled up from AP resources. So when I'm talking to students about how do we approach a graphical stimulus in AP environmental science, there's a couple of steps that I'd like you to go to um, that will help you understand a graphical stimulus and help you get to um, a better and more thorough answer. So the first thing I'd like you to look at is what is the title of the graph. The title of the graph in this particular regard is predator-prey oscillations over time. The title of a graph can actually tell you a lot about what is going on in the graph. Um, titles should be descriptive, so taking a look at that is going to give you some information. You may or may not be familiar with the word oscillation. To oscillate means to go up and down or have a regular periodic um, uh, peak and valley over a certain time period. So once we've looked at the title, let's take a look at the x-axis and the y-axis. In this case, it's axes because there are two y-axis axes, axes. So time is across the bottom here. That's our x-axis. And in this particular case, time does not have any, um, there's no hash marks. There's no, it doesn't tell us um, years or anything like that. We just know time is going from some time in the past to some time in the, in the future. Time is moving uh, linearly from left to right. Our um, two y-axes, we've got one that says prey population size. And if we look at our key here, the prey is the solid line. And then we've got predator population size, and the predator is our dashed line. So now we've got a, an idea that we're comparing prey and predator population sizes across some type of time period. So the final question that I'd like you to take a look at for this particular uh, part of the graph is, what, is the, what do the, the lines look like on this graph? Describe the trends that you see in the populations over time. What are your observations? Well, the title tells you that, that the lines are oscillating. They're going up and down on kind of in a regular manner. But you can see that those lines don't completely overlap exactly and that the peaks and the valleys aren't quite the same. So we need to kind of think about that. So overall picture here, and I'd like to draw your attention down to the bottom of your screen, we are right now doing science practice 1.a, which is a description of environmental concepts and processes. This is a foundational skill for apes. You'll be asked to do this throughout the AP exam, and we're going to practice this a lot. Okay, same graph, but let's go into it a little bit further. Um, when we're looking at this, when we're describing what this graph looks like, I might say something along the lines of, as the number of prey increase, the number of predators also increases. That's what I'm seeing there. And as the number of prey decreases, the number of predators also decrease. Okay, that's fair enough. It's right there, uh, right there in front of you. Um, but there's this lag here. So consider why might there, why is there a lag between the peak of the prey population and the peak of the predator population? You can see that the the peaks are uh, they're subsequent, but they're not they don't overlap. The other thing I'd like you to consider is why is the population size, why does that peak higher for the prey than for the predator? And I want you to think back to the question that I asked before about where those populations fall on a trophic structure. Okay. 
Finally, when we're taking a look at a graph like this, a fully realized uh, free response question might ask you to consider other factors, um, something other than predation that might cause the, the population of predators or prey to fluctuate. There are other things in ecosystems that can cause changes in predator and prey populations, and you might be asked to consider those as well. All right. So let's check for some understanding. From this video, can you identify the key aspects of predator-prey relationships? Can you describe how resource availability, the prey, influences the predator-prey relationship? And can you describe key aspects of the predator-prey relationship if it's shown in a graphical format? If you can, then you got it. Congratulations. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.